Hey everyone, my name is Lizzie, and today we'll be talking about different ways to carbonate your alcohol. What does it mean to carbonate your alcohol? It's when you feel that fizz, it's like when you drink soft drinks, you have that little tickling in your throat because wine does not need this. However, contrarily to wine, cider and beer both require usually fizz and this is due through carbonation. The first option to add fizz or carbonation into your alcohol is to add sugar before bottling your alcohol. And in order to avoid any explosions, because once there's fizz, this means there's pressure, this means that there's CO2, and once it's put in the jar, we do not want this container to explode. Therefore, some use a calculator, and this calculator will depend on the temperature of your current alcohol because if the temperature is hotter, the yeast is more active, and once the yeast is active and there's sugar inserted, then it might tend to explode or have more CO2 at a quicker rate. However, if your alcohol is colder and the yeast is dormant and you add sugar, it takes a little longer for the CO2 to develop. And one thing to do is to not use non-fermentable sugar. So what non-fermentable sugar is, it's sugar that could either be called Splenda, Xylitol, other forms of non-fermentable sugar exist. However, the yeast is not able to eat the sugar. Since the yeast is not able to eat the sugar, there is no fermentation and there is no CO2. So when you add non-fermentable sugars, it will not affect the fizz, it will just make your alcohol sweeter. So we do not want to make it sweeter. In this video, we're talking about adding fizz. Therefore, you need to add regular sugar. By regular sugar, you can add what you typically use when you start your alcohol batch, meaning brown sugar, white sugar, any type of other sugar to lead to fermentation for the yeast to eat. And the stronger your alcohol percentage, the longer it's going to take to carbonate your alcohol. So it could take roughly three to four weeks with high levels of alcohol, but if you're at 5% alcohol, it could take two to three weeks to carbonate. Okay, so what you do, once your alcohol is ready, you put in sugar and you shake it up to make sure that the sugar goes all over and you leave it in the bottle and you can test it midway to see if there's any carbonation. So after a couple of weeks, just taste it and see if there's a little fizz in your alcohol. That was option number one in adding fizz to add sugar. Number two is to add carbonating drops. And this, depending on how strong you want your fizz to be, you can leave it from two to five weeks. And a little secret that in carbonating drops, it's just made of sugar. So in the first option, you have sugar, you're gonna have to measure what quantity to put, but in carbonating drops, in that little tablet, all your sugar is already pre-calculated. You just have to drop it in your solution and it does the work. And the yeast eats the sugar inside the carbonating drops and that's what produces CO2 or in other words, bubbles or fizz. And what these carbonating drops do is that no matter what batch you're at, it's always going to be the same amount of sugar because it's the same tablet. And this avoids any off flavors because it's just sugar. More specifically, how much should you add? It's one drop for 375 milliliters, one drop of carbonating drops, and it's two drops for 750 milliliters or 25 ounces. If you're making a larger batch, you can add two and a half to three drops for one liter of alcohol. And then you play the waiting game. So you wait until all the drops are dissolved to taste. However, what I would suggest is before tasting to put your alcohol in the fridge so the yeast becomes dormant and nothing explodes in your face and it will not add extra fizz to your alcohol. By the way, I'm talking here about carbonating drops and this differs from conditioning tablets. The main difference is carbonating drops is completely made out of sugar and conditioning tablets are made of dextrose, malt extract, and heading powder. The head is the bubbles that you see on top of the glass when you pour a beer in, the little bubbles there, that's the head. And since it includes malt extract, conditioning tablets yield to more flavor than carbonating drops. Now, a third option to carbonate your alcohol is to use a soda stream. So this you'll need to buy, and I would say it's roughly 80 to $180. I have one right here, and this was not intended for my alcohol. This was intended for just water. This is what it looks like. So you would put in the bottle, attach it here. We have specific bottles for this type of machine. These bottles right here and the cap and the top part would fit exactly into the machine. And then you would press this here in order for CO2 to go from the machine into 
your water. This would have to be replaced with alcohol and you have to fill it up up to this certain line here, press the button and then choo, all the bubbles would fill this up and you would push it roughly three to five times depending on how strong you want your fizz to be and you just drink it away. That was number three. A fourth option to carbonate is using a keg. So it's roughly in the same realm as the soda stream. Here you have a keg, which is a metallic container and you have a separate container with CO2. Similarly to the soda stream, what we didn't see in the machine was there was a can of CO2 inside the machine providing the CO2 to fizz. For the keg, it's actually to put the beer inside or your cider inside, so we have to make sure to sanitize your keg. And then the separate container of CO2, there's a little tube going from the CO2 all the way to the keg, and you have to insert the CO2 inside the keg. So if we're putting the beer or the cider inside the keg, you want to leave a little space, roughly 20% of space, so there's CO2 that can fit in and nothing gets too tight. This, however, you would need time to set it up. And I looked at the price ranges for kegs and it can vary from $120 to $700. So if you're really into carbonating and price is not an option, this is a way to go. And for the steps to put CO2, you add the beer inside the keg, leave that little space, you shake up the keg for roughly 200 seconds and then you put your beer inside the fridge so the fizz does not get out of control. And there probably will be too much fizz at the beginning because it's hard to control, so you make your keg burp, so you have to just open the keg, and then you put back CO2 again in the keg, but at slower levels to make sure there's not too much fizz. However, your amount of fizz really depends on your preference. So those are the four ways to add CO2 in your alcohol. My favorite way, personally, is the soda stream and you can book a class the link is in the description below and we'll show you different ways on carbonating your alcohol whether it's to add sugar or using the soda stream however there are different ways to do so and let me know in the comments below what is your favorite option to carbonate your alcohol and if you found this video valuable share with a friend and don't forget to like and subscribe i'll see you in the next one